Well, there's clearly a larger context to it. And the larger context is one where the state is cracking down on almost any dissenting voice. Uh, you all must have followed. There have been students who protested against the Citizenship Amendment Act and the very draconian anti-terror law UAPA was slapped on them. There's been a witch hunt for human rights defenders. It's just a larger culture of repression. The message is clear. Either sing to our tune or we'll silence you. And this is something that the uh, UN Secretary General also mentioned in the last report on reprisals. Special rapporteurs have spoken about it. So there's clearly a larger context of repression there. Um, what really happened was that on the 10th of this month, our bank accounts were frozen. We were given no prior information, prior or post information for that matter. We got to know only when we approached our banks for some payments that our accounts have been frozen. And it's been two years since this incessant wave of harassment has been going on. And uh, the government hasn't even filed a charge sheet against us. So. So what, really you're, so, yeah, so what you're saying, they've been pressuring you to sort of calm down the criticisms that you've made and as a consequence they've frozen your accounts. That's been the latest step. Absolutely. I mean, we are a human rights organisation. We are the world's largest human rights organisation. Our mandate is to call out against human rights violations, and that is precisely what we were doing. Clearly, the government doesn't like that. It doesn't like any voice of dissent, for that matter. So there's a crackdown for, on almost everyone who has a disagreement with the government's current, current politics of hate and divisiveness. Yeah. The, the Indian government, of course, is claiming that they've taken the step because you receive foreign funding. Have you? And what are the funding restrictions on organisations like yours in India? And I say this with full responsibility, we have not violated a single act of Government of India. Uh, the Indian Trust, the Amnesty India Trust receives Indian funds. They've got thousands and thousands of people who pay small amounts of money to Amnesty India. Then we do fundraising via telecommunications, via online campaigns, etc. There is an Amnesty International company, but that again has been created with with complete compliance to domestic and international laws, including the FDI law of India. So there is no violation of laws at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about others being targeted, others who speak out. Have other organisations like yours also been affected? Yes, so um, if, if you just look at the latest uh, FCRA law, which is the law which regulates foreign money coming into India for charitable organizations, almost every organization has been affected. But clearly, this kind of witch hunt is specifically meant for human rights organizations that basically say things that the government doesn't want to listen to. I mean, no, probably very few governments would like to be called out out aloud on human rights violations. But the issue is, what do you do about it? Do you let them survive or do you just cramp on them and make uh, clamp down on them and make their lives miserable? So uh, for me, the fundamental issue is that. Yeah. What, what sort of impact is it going to have on your operations? Well, we've had to wind up our operations, and I say this, it's heartbreaking for me. We've let go of almost all of our staff of Amnesty India. Uh, the office is going to be shut down, which is very heartbreaking. But the fact is that we will continue to work. We'll have to figure out how to reconvene, but we will continue to work because, I mean, that's our responsibility, right? I mean, look at the egregious, the most egregious human rights violations taking place in India right now, from Kashmir to the Delhi riots. And we really believe that we've been targeted because we called out aloud on these human rights violations violations mm. but we will continue our work uh, do you feel it's a growing trend right around the globe for for countries to increasingly crack down on anyone who speaks out uh, against issues that are coming up we're seeing it in china we're seeing it in india we're seeing it in parts of europe no, absolutely. I think the resurgence of the right is pretty much a global trend. We're seeing that in many, many countries. But this kind of cramp, like, this kind of crackdown, I think, is unprecedented. We've had other offices of amnesty um, being targeted by governments, but this kind of crackdown is unprecedented. And that's why I really believe that anybody who cares about human rights, anybody who cares about India, the idea of India, the secular India, should now stand up and speak because it is the idea of India which is at threat world's largest democracy and see what we've come to. Yes, which is extraordinary. And, and what, what can other countries bring to bear to try and impact this? Well, thank you for asking that question. I think that's my most important message today, that um, this is now is the moment for international solidarity. Now is the time we all need to stand up and say, tell the governments which side, which side we, stand, we stand on. So I think uh, it is the moment of international solidarity. I think anybody who cares for values of human rights and social justice needs to stand up and show solidarity with movements like, uh, with movements like Amnesty and other movements which stand for human rights and social justice. Yamini, yeah, appreciate your time. Thanks so much.
Thank you.